No DM? No, I'm not talking about direct messages. How you doing this morning? I'm Bill DeWeese, professional voiceover talent, voiceover coach, voiceover demo producer. I've been recording voiceovers professionally for the past nearly 18 years. Recorded over 10,000 paid projects, and this is what I do. And I help other, I make money doing it. And I proudly make money doing it. And I help other people make money doing it too, helping them turn their hobbies into income and take help, helping take people who do this on a part-time basis to a full-time basis. And so that's what I'm about as a coach. That's what this channel is about, nearly 1,300 videos. And that's what my training outside of this, the voiceover blueprint is all about. Welcome. So glad to have you here. Take a second, if you would, let me know where you're watching, where you're listening uh, this morning. And congrats to Rick uh, Sadowski in Des Moines, who was first to check in on the live stream. Always love to see those names pop up in the live stream. So I'll do a little uh, do a little call out here at the end of uh, this morning's message, which, oh boy, you know, I as a coach, if I was just a voiceover talent, I wouldn't have to think about these things because I know what to do. I would just shut out the noise and I would just do my thing and I wouldn't give it a second thought. But as a coach, and I'm working with students who understandably, you know, don't have a whole lay of the land yet, don't have the experience. And so they they hear things and they'll bring it back to me. And so then I have to dispel myth and, and craziness and all, which, I mean, that's just part, you know, part of what you do. But that's one of the reasons I tell people, be really careful what you listen to. You know, joining online groups, uh, uh, voiceover groups can be a dangerous thing. If you're group sourcing voiceover information, voiceover advice, that is a very dangerous thing. And that's why I'm not even a big fan of like voiceover events. And I tell, I mean, if you want to go, that's, that's fine and great. Just be very careful. You have to take things with a grain of salt. Case in point. So somebody recently after attending a recent major voiceover event said, and by the way, I haven't just heard this once. This has come to me a number of times from a number of sources. So I don't know that the information is 100% accurate, but, but I've been able to surmise basically what happened. And that's this, that somebody who it sounds like they were either teaching or speaking or in some sort of exalted place at this particular event, made a comment about uh, direct marketing for voiceover and said, well, you know, clients are starting to say, you know, we're getting tired of all this direct marketing or voiceover prospects are saying, you know, we're just, you know, we're just tired of this voiceover marketing. And the conclusion that was drawn, whether it was by the speaker or by the person or those who heard it, because this is, again, I'm just telling you the way I heard it, is that we should really, we should stop doing this because there are some people that just, you know, don't particularly care for it. So let's, let's stop, let's hold the bus for just a second. Let's talk about this. Let's, let's talk about business as it relates to voiceover. And this is one of the, I think the big, the big problems Coming into voiceover as a creative, as a performer, not that you're a performer or creative, that's not a problem. That's, that's a good thing, but not every, you can't be everything it's, or it's understandable. You don't understand everything that you need to, to know in 2024 to be a successful voiceover talent, because it takes a lot more than just being a good performer. As a matter of fact, the, uh, there's tons of great performers and voice actors that rarely ever work who can't support themselves recording voiceover. So that's not what it is. You not only have to be a great performer, you have to be your own audio engineer. And you've got to be your own agent. You've got to be your own marketer if you want to succeed in voiceover in 2024. So it's understandable that somebody who comes from a more traditionalist, you know, institutionalized voiceover background, who's used to, to have somebody else do the dirty work, because basically it's framing marketing and business as a bad thing. So as an actor or as a performer, you know, either we don't want to do it, you know, we're just, we're too good for that. So let's let our, you know, your agents, of course, it's okay for them to do that. We expect them to do that, but we're not going to do that. Either that, or we're so concerned about everybody loving us and liking us and that we don't even want anybody to raise an eyebrow at us. If we ask the simple question, are you currently accepting voiceover demos? That's a problem. And the unwillingness to do the hard work of voiceover, which is the marketing, that's a problem. If you want to make money in voiceover. Now, if you don't, then this, you know, this discussion is moot. This is not relevant to you. 
But when this kind of information gets gets spread, it's it's you know when I hear it, and I it's it's not just this. I hear stuff, you know, you, you can imagine in my position. I hear things on a regular basis, and, and you know, it's always in my mind. I just think um, I you know roll my eyes and think, well, here we go again. You know, a lot of what I do is like a firefighter putting out fires. You know, somebody said this, somebody did that. You know, this person who's done this for like 50 years said, well, we should listen, listen, listen. I make no claims to have the corner on all truth when it comes to voiceover. Nobody does. All I can share is my experience as, yes, a voiceover talent for the past 18 years, but also as a business person former business consultant, somebody who's been involved in the growing of businesses for my entire career. And that's going on 45 years now. And I'm here to tell you, if you want to grow any business, I don't care if you make widgets or you're a voiceover talent, you better darn well figure out how to market. It's not complicated. And when I say figure it out, it's not some great mystery. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of information on this channel. Certainly those in my training program have the complete, if you've been through my marketing, uh, uh, the direct, my or I'm sorry, my marketing uh, training, you've got the entire roadmap. And as you know, it's not, it's not rocket science. It's not brain surgery, but it takes execution. And the biggest hurdle to that is mentally and emotionally. Again, this idea that we shouldn't do anything that causes somebody to raise an eyebrow or, or to be inconvenienced in any way, shape, or form. So oh, let me ask you this. Okay. And here's, and here's the, the weird thing about all of this, the direct marketing. Direct marketing, let me define that. It's where you're reaching out directly to prospective clients. It could be through a phone call. It could be through an email or a postcard, but you're, you're reaching out directly to do that. If you, let's say you, you were to do, well, let, me, let, me, let me back up. Let's look bigger picture. As a voiceover talent, there's a lot of commercials being recorded, right? Do you think that most people like really enjoy and that's what they want when they're watching, a, uh, you know, a show or a movie or some kind or a YouTube video that all of a sudden an ad pops up? Do you think most people like welcome that? And I, get, I mean, hey, I'm a person. I enjoy watching some ads. I like to listen to voiceovers. But why is it that that Netflix or Hulu or whoever charges you a premium rate to make sure that you don't hear those. It's because generally speaking, people don't want that interruption. However, it's those ads that account for a large, a large percentage of the stuff you own and you bought because you were influenced by that. Our economy barrels forward because of marketing, because of advertising. What I do as a marketer in direct marketing, again, it's not offensive. It's not uh, in your face. It's I take the most gentle approach that you can possibly take. Are there times when people, they've got 101 other things going on and they really don't want to talk about it right now? Of course they do. I do. It. That's the way my life works. That's the way your life works. But does it mean you can, you, you want to stop marketing just because somebody, you know, would rather you not send them an email? And if you do, if you if if you're convinced, okay, well then, then I should never do this. Then you need to get a job, and let the marketing department or the owner of that company do the dirty work for you, because so you get paid. Because so, I guarantee you, somebody's got to sell it. Somebody's got to market it, and somebody's got to sell it, or nobody gets paid. So this comment again, I wasn't there. I don't know exactly what was said, and maybe by the time you know the old telephone game, by the time the last person hears it, it's a little bit skewed. But I've heard it a number of times from a number of different people, so I think I'm pretty close in the ballpark, and and I think I understand enough of the nature of, of human nature as well as voice actor nature to think there's probably a bit of truth to this. And I'm sure the person who said it meant no harm to you or your business by saying it. However, let me just make it clear. If you want to be successful as a voiceover talent, you better get to marketing. You've got to be a, a good performer. You've got to be a good audio engineer, and you've got to be a good marketer. And does it, it will it make you uncomfortable? Probably will. Marketing is maybe the most, it's the least comfortable of all of these because that's where we actually get feedback. You know, we voiceover talent complain all the time about not getting feedback on our work. Well, in marketing, we get feedback. We get it pretty quickly. So it's a good chance to get feedback. But in all seriousness, I want you to succeed in voiceover. 
And there's only one way in business to succeed. And that is you have to have a good product and you have to get in front of the right people on a regular and consistent basis, or you will not succeed. It's really that simple. So you have to ask yourself that question and be careful of what, you know, you're going to hear lots of stuff. There's tons of noise out there. Really be discerning. Think about that. Filter that through what you know to be true about business and be careful because just because somebody's done this for a long time and had a level of success at some point in their career and they say it doesn't mean it's true. Just because I say it, I mean, I know it's true. I know it is from my own experience and the people that I work with, but you should, you should second guess it. You should test everything because there is no shortage of information. There's lack of wisdom, but no shortage of, shortage of information when it comes to, uh, well, I was going to say online, but really just about any place. So again, I guess this, this gets me a little worked up only because I know it's, it's an obstacle because if you buy into that mentality, it will kill your career. It will, it will kill your efforts at building a successful voiceover career. And again, if you don't have the stomach for asking the question, are you currently accepting demos through an email or a phone call, then you probably should get a job and let the marketing department deal with that kind of dirty work and uh, just worry about getting your paycheck. Uh, Okay. Take a breath. I need a sip of coffee. Okay. And by the way, speaking of direct marketing, just a little teaser for you here, a live event, direct marketing training next month, taught by the direct marketing guru in all of voiceover, Todd Barsmus. This is a man who has perfected it. I mean, at a high, high level, makes a lot of money in voiceover, a lot of money. And he does most of that business through his direct marketing. He has fine-tuned, fine-tuned it to a science and an art, and he's going to share everything with you later next month. More information coming. So that's just a teaser. I'll give you all that information later. However, I will tell you this. Below in the description is my spring fever sale. So if you want some great marketing information in your hands right now, along with all other things related to voiceover, lots of great training at a very, very reduced price. It's this weekend only. Again, link below in the description. Okay. Let's do some shout outs here. Rick, good morning. As I mentioned earlier, first in today, Rob in Reedsville, North Carolina. Hey, Rebecca in Michigan, how are you doing? Denise in Long Island, uh, Emma in Huntington Beach, Nephi in Knoxville, Aaron in Missouri, Mike in New Jersey, Bill, Idaho, Ethan, Toronto. Uh, We've got GS in the state of the great state of Washington, Dale in Atlanta. Rob is checking in from Indonesia. Hey, Rob, hope the weather's nice today because it's not here. Melissa in San Diego, Sirius in Charlotte. Oops, YouTube moved the, 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 the chat on me again. Let's see here. Let's back it up, back it up. Where was I? Uh, Sirius in Charlotte, yes. And Pastor Nathan is listening in from Spring Mills, Pennsylvania. Pastor Nathan, good to see you. And Van Wert, Ohio. Yeah, I know where Van Wert is. I've been there a time or two. John in Rhinebeck, New York. Mike in Spanish Fort, Alabama. Ralph in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Wayne from Sopping Wet, Puget Sound, Washington. Sarah in Chile, Wisconsin. Lemuel, made alive today. Lemuel, good to see you. And we've got Bill here in Atlanta. Henry in Rockford. Scotty in Brookings, South Dakota. Jason, um, St. Louis is too cold for spring break. Yeah, sorry about that. Sandra, the sun is out in Worthington, Ohio. Gregory in North Dallas. Matt in New Jersey. Uh, Sarai in El Paso. I had an offer about an audiobook short series. Awesome, 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 awesome. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Madi in Maryland. Uh, Dewan, or yeah, Dewan in New York City. Hey, Dewan. Gene in Dallas, Fort Worth. And by the way, I see questions popping up in the stream, which are great. I, I save those for Friday. So if you guys would, uh, I try to take the time to, to share, you know, really, really good and relevant content with you Monday through Thursday. And then typically on Friday, I save that time for questions. So bring those back on Friday morning. Tanya, happy hump day to you in South Philly. John is vacationing in St. Augustine, Florida. What a cool city St. Augustine is. Wow. Uh, we've got Jay in Arkansas. Tim and Altoona. Wally, hello to you. 
And good morning to the Blueprint community, he says, in Maryland Strong. Yes, man, our thoughts and prayers are with you guys. What a tragedy in Baltimore yesterday. Victoria in California. Uh, let's see. Overtraining has a negative effect. Why get on a plane to a convention and spend big money? Join the voiceover blueprint and learn the real deal from a working pro actor, Bill DeWeese. <laughs> De again, another unsolicited comment. Thank you, Dave. That's, that's very kind. Very kind. And again, I, I would never say don't go to events. That's not my point in saying that. It's just, number one, know why you're going and what you expect from that. And also, you've got to go in, you know, with your antenna up and realize a lot of stuff's going to be said. Not all of it's going to be beneficial or helpful. Uh, some of them may be, though. Hopefully so. Greg in snowy Winnipeg. Stacy in San Diego. Terry in Falston, Maryland. Uh, you are right. You, we must continue to market our voiceover business. It's common sense. You know, and let, let me just take another second here. I, you know, again, at one point, I worked for a consulting firm here in the Chicago area, and our, our clientele were, were uh, businesses smaller to medium. I, you know, when I say medium, I'm, I mean, these are pretty big businesses, but the, the troubles tend to be the same, just at a different scale. But one thing, you know, if you look at small businesses, about 85% fail in five years. And it's not because of necessarily, there's sometimes there are things beyond their control. Um, acts of God, uh, et cetera. But most of the time, it's because they simply didn't understand. And not just marketing, but there are a number of things you know, in terms of how, you know, uh, HR, managing employees, you know, turnover and, and how do you cash flow, all that kind of stuff. But man, if you cannot mar market is the engine of business. It's what everything that you enjoy today, anything that you're wearing, anything that you own, you enjoy is a result of somebody's marketing effort, you know? And so what I'm doing is empowering you to market on your own behalf. Again, in a way that's not intimidating to you or the client that truly, truly works uh, for those who are willing to do it. JR in Austin, Texas, happy hump day to you. Jason, Kearney, Nebraska. Rick says, I love it when you get fired up. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. You know, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty uh, laid back guy. INFJ, that's my Myers-Briggs type indicator for any of you who are into that kind of thing. Um, I'm not a, a, a full-blown type A personality. Um, I, I appear to be much more chill than I actually am inside. But when something strikes that nerve, and I know it's hurting the voiceover community and voiceover talent, that bothers me. And that bo it bothers me a lot. But thanks, Rick, for the comment. Amisha in South Carolina. Howdy. Heather in Chattanooga. Sun's back. Wayne, after 40 years. Okay, listen to this. From a business owner. Wayne says, after 40 years of owning my flooring business, I know if you don't market, you die. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm the proud voice of, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the business now. I do uh, TV commercials for some floor company down south and uh, glad to do it because that's how you get the word out. Amanda in Philadelphia. Nela in South Africa. And if I mispronounce your name, please forgive me, but I'm so glad you're here today. Rusty, good morning from the Upper Peninsula. Uh, let's see here. Burren. Thanks for being here this morning. That's a good question. Bring that back on Friday for our Q&A Friday, if you would. Mark in Essence Park, Colorado. Uh, let's see here. Who have I not said hello to? So marketing company <laughs> Scotty has a great comment here. This is great, Scotty. So marketing companies are tired of people marketing? Sounds like they won't be marketing much longer. Yeah, you know, well, but here's the here's the thing. And I'm sure probably what happened was somebody said, man, you know, I'm just getting too many emails or something like that. Sure, who of us have not said that? I hate the emails, the marketing emails I get too, but you know what? And the TV commercials I have to watch. But again, but actually it's because of that stuff that I'm able to, 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 to find things that, that are of interest or of value to me and to pursue those. You know, we're pretty good at being able to filter out what we don't want to see or hear. So again, this is nothing to be concerned about. As a matter of fact, you can work it to your advantage. Great. If all of the other voiceover talent are intimidated that somebody's going to look at them cross-eyed when they, when they market, then great. That's just more for us. I mean, I, I, I hate that for them. That's their decision. 
but it's not going either way. This does not work out bad for us. Not at all. Thanks for being here, guys. Have a great day. Don't forget to check out the spring fever sale before it goes away. Lots of training, very small price link below in the description. Talk to you guys tomorrow.